Mortal Kombat X dropkick PlayStations, PCs, and Xboxes around the world last week, and today we've got prequel comic book writer Sean Kittleson and legendary game director Ed Boon to chat about how everything ties together. Ed, congratulations on finishing Mortal Kombat X. Thank you. We're very excited for players to get their hands on it finally. Have you gotten a full night of sleep yet? Uh, recently, yes. Yes. Did you spend a night in the office at all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah. I don't think I've ever worked on a game that didn't have you know some nights uh, in the office. What's your caffeine of choice? Uh, I drink coffee in the morning, but then I stop right there because then I have a terrible night's sleep if I drink in the afternoon. Self-control. Yeah. So, like, this is the first time in a while that a comic has been a big tie-in, but there have been tie-ins before. Yeah, like, the, the previous Mortal Kombat comics have been a completely separate effort. What's so exciting about this one is, you know, when we started talking, yeah. we were jumping ahead 25 years in the game, so there was this big gap of time introducing a bunch of characters. Yeah. So we were like, how awesome would it be to fill in that information in a way that very few other mediums can do, and comics was just the perfect answer to that mm -hmm. and when we were first started to talk about it you know we knew you from before and we were like you know I wonder what he's gonna do with it and then you just gave us this this <laughs> manifesto of what you wanted to do it was it was great you know you're we like this guy has planned this thing out I was worried that I jumped the gun no no because it was long it was like 20 pages it, it, was huge. <laughs> it was huge the thing I keep saying is you know I, I look at it and it's so cool to see somebody running with it who needs so little you know, oh. redirecting. But like, you guys gave me such so much material to work from. Yeah. And this is the thing that I kind of feel like I have to always remind fans and stuff. Is yeah. like, I didn't start with a blank slate. You know, like We had the cinematics for the game in place, all the concept art. I feel very lucky that all these new characters were there yeah. and had been imagined in a way that I could see them like they were real people. Exactly. And and what was for me what was so exciting was because you know these characters didn't have as much of a history as like a Scorpion or Sub-Zero and something and seeing, you know, Devora, you know, Kotal Khan and all that, yeah. you know, I was reading it and getting into it, you know, <laughs> and these were characters that I already knew and I, I felt like I was learning and getting to know them even better. We talked about this a bit when we worked on Injustice together, but I did grow up with MK. Back then, you know, we had just the bio cards. So as a fan, you you extrapolated so much exactly, from just yeah. the bio. And if you beat the arcade mode and got that ending, you're like, whoa, I know so much more about Scorpion yeah, now. Yeah. I grew up with, you know, loving the DC heroes, Superman, Batman. And so, you know, our team went into this, went to Injustice with like that same kind of fever that you went into Mortal Kombat, well, yeah. you know. And, it makes all the difference in the world when somebody loves what they're doing. Yeah. They have a mission, they have such a clear vision of it. By that same token, I remember seeing all the work that you guys were putting into Injustice, yeah. Yeah. and it was clear that there was that love there. Yeah. The spirit was authentic. Exactly. And that's yeah. sort of how I try to approach Mortal Kombat was, yeah. there's almost a song yeah. to it, there's a melody to what Mortal Kombat is. If you hear it and it's not in tune, yeah. ah, that's, not Mortal Kombat. Yeah, and there's and there's a pacing of things like you know the um, you know Mortal Kombat has that you know that crazy violence and that just co totally over the top events and you know as I was just like flipping through pages and and seeing the graphic imagery you guys had on it, it's like that these guys these guys really do love Mortal Kombat. So okay, so let's clear the air for all the fans yeah. who people have been blowing me up on Twitter uh -huh. that they think that you mandated to me that Su Hao had to die. No, 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 no. Actually, it's so funny because I think I have a little bit of a reputation of not liking that character and, and that kind of permeated. And then just coincidentally, yeah. you chose to kill him. And I think some people did think that that was um, pushed by me, but I, I had nothing to do with it. And, and I don't think that you've taken that approach in the games either, because if you look at MKX, it honors so much of what came before it, even as it's bringing the new characters. Well, we really thought that, uh, like, m the last game we did, the Mortal Kombat in 2011, you know, yeah. in the middle of that game, you know, we knew that we it was time to introduce new elements, new characters to the game, new settings and stuff. And the introduction of, of characters in the game is very difficult just because people are, they're in love with their favorite characters. Yeah. So all of a sudden these new characters come in and it's like, you know, Who's this? Why should yeah. I care about him? <laughs> and what was so cool about the idea of doing a comic is it gives you that backstory. This is why you should care about him. You're very closely associated with Scorpion, obviously. Yeah, yeah. When the book first launched, 
Nobody really knew that Scorpion was going to be this grandmaster right, right. who had an apprentice and, and who even had a human side. So what was it like for you to finally pull that trigger and say, we're restoring his humanity. We're going to see what happens when he comes back. We're always wanting to give players, give fans a little bit more history on it. That's why it's so exciting when somebody else comes in and kind of gives their spin on it so players can kind of see yet another side to that character. Is all the stuff, because I put such an emphasis on the Hellfire. Yeah. Uh, is all that cool with you? Yeah, yeah, yeah? absolutely, okay. <laughs> absolutely. You know, I read it as a fan of, of it too. So it's great to see new content that I didn't have to kind of labor over and, and you know and kind of be involved in. So it, it's a little glimpse of the perspective of like players and other fans mm -hmm. when they first see a new game of ours or something. So speaking of that fan perspective, Tremor. Yeah. Like how loud for you guys was the sort of the, the call for Tremor to be a DLC character for him to it make any appearance? It was oddly loud. You know, yeah. Tremor has never had a, a, a very big presence. He's showed up in a, in a couple of games. Um, and there are some characters for some reason that just resonate that, that have had almost cameos in the Mortal Kombat yeah. universe. But they were characters that people are tweeting to me like, you know, for a year straight, you know, where's Tremor, where's Rain? So when we were coming up with the DLC characters, we knew pretty early on that Tremor was gonna be one of them. But uh, I've always, uh, actually always wanted to be asking you, like when you had started, you know, you saw what we were doing in the game, and you were like, okay, what am I gonna fill in? You know, what yeah. was your process of <laughs> filling in that cap? Because I was just so amazed when I got such a and I say this in the most positive way, ridiculously detailed <laughs> outline of what you wanted to do. Yeah. Like, you seem to have every issue, every beat, every ending and yeah. beginning of an issue. How was that? How did that so, come about? I knew how hard you guys worked on your games. Builds would come in for Injustice, and they looked like a completely different game from eight weeks later. And I knew that that came from all that dedication. And I think I felt like, from my side as a DC executive, you had really done right by us. Like you had, you had embraced it in such a way. And I felt like I needed to do the same thing. So I had a sort of, I called it like Carrie from Homeland's chart. It, it, it looked like, the, like I was trying to catch a terrorist because I had a plot for where every single character was in the timeline at various yeah. points and when they moved and when you know, very major events were happening. But the most important thing was making a list of the characters who we knew were had to appear. And partly the, the characters who could appear. Because some of them are off the playing field during that point in time because maybe they're in the nether realm or, or you know, they're not supposed to be fighting. But so I took that list of characters and I just wrote down like, what do they want? Where do they start? And where do they end? And I really gravitated towards Kotal and Cassie yeah, early on. Yeah, yeah. Kotal Khan, I, I, it was great to see him have such a big presence because you know he's a big part of our game story as well. I think when I opened the script, I expected him to be the boss, and then he had all these other shades and layers, and that was a way into the character for me. Where I said, "Oh, this guy is not Shao Kahn. He's not just brutal for the sake of being brutal." And I like that. I like that the the characters didn't play into. Your, your superficial expectations of them. You could keep peeling back the layers because they had the more nuance. Yeah. Uh, and I think that was, to me, what MKX began to represent where all of your assumptions about who these characters are kind of gets overturned and not in a way that changes who the characters are, yeah. but in a way that complements what, what came before. Yeah. I mean, Cassie was another one for me. Yeah. I think because she was the first character I actually got to play. When I met up with you guys at E3 and I got my hands on, on the controller, and I felt this perfect mix of Johnny and Sonya. It was as if they actually had had this yeah, child. Yeah. I really like the dynamic, though, you gave, you know, Cassie and um, and Jackie. Yeah. You know, that kind of common thread between them where they have, you know, Sonya Blade, her, yeah. her mother, Jax is her father, and, and train yeah. together. I, was, I remember we cracking up when I saw them, you know, the first time they were fighting and they were kind of like sparring. They're like, you know, destroying the place. And yeah. it's like, that's so yeah. like, Typical Mortal Kombat. It was funny to see the pages come in because the way it was written, they're fighting in the living room. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then the pages come in and it made it real. And I thought, man, if like Johnny's condo in Venice was a, yeah. a level in the game. Yeah, exactly. They're like, oh, there's a destructible environment back there. <laughs> but And they're friends and they're just beating the absolute shit out of each other. Yeah. <laughs> Which is something funny um, over the top of that. I loved it. Can I ask you one more question? Aaron Black. Yeah. He appeared in the comic. 
he hadn't even spoken. He's just in the background and Kotal name checks him. But the fans grabbed a hold of that. It was yeah. before he was announced oh, officially yeah. and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. What was that like from your guys' perspective in Chicago, knowing that you had this character on deck and the fans were already getting into a feeding frenzy waiting for him? Yeah, we always knew that there was going to be speculation of, you know, is yeah. it in the game or not? But there was something about Aaron Black and we knew he was gonna be one of the later characters we were gonna announce, and maybe it was the visual imagery, but everybody really, you know, just just uh, demanded that he be in the game. Well, Ed, thank you so much for allowing me to, to be a part of your dream. I was, I was, I'm, I'm glad, um, you know, like I said, this comic book was such a great experience just because every time we were just like, these guys love Mortal Kombat, let's let them keep going. That, more than anything else, is all the validation I will ever need in my life. Oh. <laughs> oh, awesome. Thanks, Ed. Thanks, man. Mortal Kombat X is in stores right now, and if you miss Sean's digital comic, you can read the entire run at readdcentertainment.com. And be sure to click subscribe for more DC All Access, including a celebration of 75 years of Catwoman tomorrow. <laughs>